because it's our heritage column, column. Uh, it's what we've been doing for a hundred years or more and it's been eroded over the last number of years personally I think it's been eroded since 1998 and it's got worse and worse and it culminated with the Camogie team not stopping here in town last week after spending two hours in that lawn and for the secretary of the Camogie club to come out and say that it was, they didn't stop here for Covid. Was there no Covid in that lawn where they spent two hours? So that's why, we're, that's why this campaign has been launched. The whole town is involved in the campaign. I'm hoping that we have a good turnout of former Galway players here today and all Ireland winners and local men that have been supporting Galway, like Sir Bobby Burke, Frank Finnerty, Oni Jennings and Sean Keeley and all these people. The aim of the campaign is to get an assurance from the Camogie board, the county football and hurling board and the sponsor that the teams will stop in town. Now we appreciate that safety concerns have to be taken into consideration. But we but we have we have the best facilities anywhere in Galway to host teams. We have the Dugan Park if you want to bring them in there. We have the care parks up at the Fair Green, which which we did one year when Joe Canning won his All Ireland. So we're well placed to host the teams like the whole this campaign now will be online next week. And we have hair copy as well, cards going around into the pubs and the homes and that like. And the important thing about this is that the children signed them, six, seven, eight year old, A another six years of age, A another ten years of age, A another eight years of age. Because this is what we're doing this campaign for. It's for their future and their heritage. By signing the petition online and by supporting when the see we're incorporating this protest now with another protest about buses. I want to thank uh, particularly Tomas Galan and his family here at Galan's Hotel for their hospitality. They accommodated us at an hour's notice. And I want to thank Frank Finnerty and Bobby Burke, Boney Jennings, Colin Brown, Carmel Keeley in particular, who was advising me every day about the weather and weather conditions, what to be like at the weekend. And at the end of the day, he gave me the heads up to switch. Hello, uh, as former mayor of Banlaslow, my name is Mike Kelly. Um, I welcomed so many teams to back to Banlaslow, so many victorious teams and so many defeated teams. But it was always a pleasure to welcome all our All Ireland teams back here to Banlaslow. The first stop, the gateway to the west. And the most important thing about all of that was to see the joy on the kids' faces here in Bandleslow. And this is why I'm supporting this campaign today, to have the Galway team stopping in Bandleslow to get a bit to the west. So please, we want the Galway teams to stop here in Bandleslow, and please sign the petition. Thank you very, very much. Bandleslow abu agus goliv abu. Thank you. I have always been a supporter of Galway teams down through the years and I've been in Crow Park on numerous occasions with my late father as a teenager and I think it's very important for the Galway team to stop in Banislow, it's the first town once you come over the bridge and I think it's very important for all teams, win, lose or draw, to stop in Banislow. Oh it is very important because it is the first town once you come over the bridges. And I think it's very important that the staff, even the Camorca team, the staff in that loan, which is in West Meadlack, and they didn't even stop in Banlaslow. And it was very disappointing for all the people in Banlaslow. I'm lending my support to this campaign because I was reared in Banlaslow, and my, all teams that ever won or lost came through, came, came through Banlaslow. And my, my, one of my first abiding memories was 1952 when Galway won the minor All Ireland. And we had four players from Banlaslow area uh, uh, on the team. The team came in, and I played for Galway myself from 1954 minor until '63 again Dublin, and uh, I was in two losing All Irelands and a lot of winning kind of championships in that time and some losing ones. 
But we always came back to a balance law, win, lose or draw, we had to turn out in the square. And uh, apart from that reason, uh, I, I think uh, we, every team was welcome to Bandus Law and I had the honour of welcoming the Corofin team in 1978 when, the, when they won the, the first club all Ireland and saying a few words on behalf of the club and welcome to, uh, Silk to go home at the cup here. And most teams stopped here, like an all Camogie teams as well, but it's unfortunate that they're bypassing Bandus Law. Hurling teams win, lose or draw and uh, you know, uh, it's sad that Van der Sloot has been bypassed like that because the Dugan Park, every, the greatest hurlers and footballers, and hurlers in particular, from Wexford, Cork and everything, have paid tribute to Dugan Park. As a matter of fact, Matty Cantley has documented that. I have the three pages of what the hurlers, the hurlers said about the surface of Van der Sloot. And uh, so we're always welcome to the Dugan Park. I know since Pierce Stadium was built, we haven't the same, uh, you, know, uh, you know, approach to it, you know, but still, uh, I don't think, um, Kumogi team has got a bit of stick for not calling. I don't know what the reason was for, but stopped in that loan, I see. But the thing is, uh, the Dugan Park is used by Kumogi teams more so than a lot of teams. So I think that they should have stopped in, 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 you know, in Banislaw.